guys, welcome back to the Astro Imaging Channel. Tonight's session, Sharpening and Enhancing Images in Photoshop, and it's going to be presented by Josh Smith. But before we get into that, I do want to show off our image of the week. Right there. Uh, this week's image of the week is SH2-187 by Adam Landefeld. Uh, it's a beautiful uh, combination, H, uh, uh, reflection uh, nebula, and um, I don't know, it's just kind of an attractive image with all the star colors, uh, dark dust floating in the front. Uh, definitely a great image, and I suggest jumping over to our website and clicking image of the week so you can see it uh, without uh, the lag or the, uh, the video lag that you're going to see right now. Um, and at the same time, leave them a comment, tell them you think it's a, a great image, or uh, submit your own images and uh, you'll be up for uh, consideration. That said, I am going to take my screen back. Um, I do, Josh, before you jump in, uh, I do know we have one advertisement that I think Alex wanted to make. Alex, you want to do that at the beginning of the session? Yeah. yeah. Uh, can you uh, hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. okay. Um, why am I getting my feedback here? Um, okay, um, I've got a couple things to do. Let me get to let me get to the right program first off. Um, screen sharing. I share the whole screen. A couple of things going on that you guys should all be aware of if you're at all into imaging. Can you see my uh, screen correctly? Yeah. Okay. Um, Advanced imaging conference is going to be going on at the end of this month. Registration has been going on, and I think the cheaper registration is over with, but the uh, but the other registration is uh, still available. I put the link to this particular thing over in the um, um, in our conversation over there. But uh, this is the greatest collection of astro imagers around. They've got a lot of really cool things going on. Uh, you can see that they've got uh, what uh, four strands. Come on, computer, hustle up here. They got four strands where they talk about um, advanced imaging. Planetary and Tuan imaging. Tuan imaging is nightscape type of imaging. Uh, foundations of uh, astrophotography, which is um, a lot of beginner stuff and a lot of basic stuff and things like that. And uh, general guidance. And uh, Dr. Bado, Gaston will be there, Tony Hallis, Rahelio, Jerry Rodriguez, Warren Keller, Ron Brecher, uh, Chris Hendren, Alan Dry. I mean, these are, these are people that you all know. And if you could at all join us up at um, um, uh, the Advanced Imaging Conference in San Jose at the end of this month, it will be really cool, really good to see you. I know Eric's probably going and a few, other, uh, three, a few others of you I've seen up there. Uh, another thing that's happening, let me see, where's that one? That one right there. Oh, that isn't where I wanted it to be. Uh, over on blog. Where is that? Come on, blog. Come on up. There's a advertisement out over here. Come on, let's go with telescopes. Um, Warren Keller is going to be coming out to Goat Mountain and do a, a workshop with us all um, uh, very shortly on September 23rd, and. Um, I can't seem to find his his workshop information here, but it's on the uh, Woodland Hills website. And for fifty bucks, you can join us. You can come camping with us. Uh, it'll be a small group. We don't anticipate more than about twenty or so people. And he's going to be making a video for Woodland Hills. And if you'd like to join us, um, telescopes.net is the um, is the place where you want to go. And I think I'm finally getting there now. Let's see, events. There it is. Um, and you get over there and I again put that uh, link on the website for 50 bucks you get uh, free meals uh, lunch and dinner you get to camp with us you get to spend the day with Warren Keller and as you know Warren is a really great source for doing a lot of things in um, Fix Insight so join us at uh, Warren on September 23rd and then the next weekend up in San Jose I hope to see some of you guys up there be sure to come on up and say hi Okay, thanks, Adam. No problem. Thank you, Alex. Um, then I guess so. Oh, Alex dropped out. I wonder if he actually cl clicked the wrong button. Uh, jo uh, I guess we're ready to hand it right over to Josh. Josh. Thanks, Adam. 
Um, so tonight we are going to go over, I'm not sure if it was posted or not, we're going to go over basically enhancing and sharpening images in Photoshop. Um, same, I'm going to talk more about ideas. I'll show examples of how to do it, um, but kind of more ideas of what we're doing so that way it can be transferred over to Pix Insight as well. Um, and we've done things like this before here, but we're going to kind of do a little bit of a deeper dive on this um, and show a couple other uh, ideas. So. One of the things I want to talk about um, to start with is what actually kind of helps enhance an image or or make it pop. Um, Adam, I just want to make sure that my screen's being shared. Can you see Photoshop? Yes, we can. Okay, great. So I'm going to go through a handful of different images that have, I think, different challenges um, to get an enhancement or to get uh, a sharpening effect stuff like that. One of the things that happens as you're processing photos is, you know, to really make stuff pop, sometimes you want to sharpen things and get hard lines. Um, but a lot of times it's not so much about sharpening as it is kind of, uh, you know, showing a little bit more of a dynamic image. Uh, a lot of the images that we shoot don't necessarily have hard lines, especially ones that have really, you know, kind of soft nebulous dust or combination of dark dust as well as, uh, uh, you know, kind of brighter reflection dust. And in those, the challenge is, you know, to make stuff pop, even though, there's no hard line. So when you're looking out here, um, kind of on, this is the iris nebula. Um, there's not a lot of hard lines. There's a few hard lines in the middle and we can do something there. Um, and we'll come back at some point to do that tonight. But what, what I want to talk more about is, you know, kind of overall looking at images and deciding what to do to make stuff pop. Um, so there's a handful of things. One, one is, you know, uh, is sharpening. One is, finding ways to get the nebula to jump more. One is to get more difference between the light and the dark stuff. Um, one is to reduce the noise in darker spots so that they look a little bit smoother and actually, you know, kind of stand out a little bit more. So the first one we're going to talk about is just getting nebula to pop a little bit more. Um, and so we've done stuff on like a screen mask invert here. Um, and, and that's a great way to get it to stretch more. Problem a lot of times, that happens when you stretch images a lot, especially something like the iris. If you look at it from back here, um, you see a lot of dust, but the whole field is also dominated by really bright stars. So if you stretch it and expose it long enough to get the background dust to come up, you also get a lot of really bright stars. So just looking at an image like this, there's a couple things you can do to get it, get it to pop a little bit more. And right off the bat, um, you know, the way to get the dust to, to look like it's popping out more is actually to make sure that your stars are reduced more. Um, I've done quite a few episodes here where I do tone mapping, uh, and, and I think that's really the most effective way, but it also takes a long time and isn't necessarily, um, you know, the most fun way to do it. But, and, and there's also methods of stretching uh, and masking your stars while you're going, but just thinking from kind of like an overall big picture perspective to get your nebula to stand out more, you want your stars to not dominate the scene. Now there's other images um, and other situations where sometimes having your stars be big and fat and bright actually help you get a 3D effect. Because that's what we're really trying to do is get a 3D effect in all of this stuff. Um, and that's kind of what I think of when I think of enhancing and sharpening stuff. The whole reason you do that is to get a little more of a 3D effect. Um, so, uh, you know, starting with the iris right here, you know, all I did was a simple SPF on this and brought it into Photoshop. So there's just a simple stretch on it. Um, I just want to talk first about the power of just reducing the stars and how that'll make it look like uh, instead of, you know, this just being a big star field with some stuff behind it, you kind of get this gap to look like it's floating. So, you know, we can use a number of actions to minimize the stars, or I can show you another way to do it in just a second here. Um, but just coming in here and running a, uh, you know, reduced star bloating on it uh, in it, in a hurry, that's going to make this nebula look like it's going to stand out quite a bit more. So I'm going to make sure that the page I'm sharing has this little tab here. And so doing that once or twice is going to make this stand out a little bit more. Um, so we'll go ahead and hit this one more time. And reduce the star bloating. And we'll bring up the slugging factor just a little bit here. And so you can see just by reducing the star bloating just a little bit here, you get that nebula to pop just a little bit more. So that's a, that's a good first step. If you want to go a little bit further and actually come in here and reduce the stars more, 
we can get this nebula to stand out more and more. And again, what we're trying to do is basically get more of that 3D effect. So a way to do that in Photoshop, if you don't have actions, um, <clears throat> is to come in here to your filters, go to other, and go to a minimum filter here, like this. Um, and you, at least in the new Photoshop, you have an option to go to roundness or squareness. To go to squareness, it's not going to it's not going to do a very good job of keeping your stars in. However, one thing it does do a good job is actually removing your stars. So there's two ways that I'm going to go about doing this. One, to start off with your roundness here, um, and you can change how much you reduce the stars by how big this pixel slider is. Now you have to be careful because if you go too big, you can see in here you get this really kind of weird modeling effect. Let me zoom back out. I kind of killed this just a little bit. Um, you get this really weird modeling effect and you can see that these big kind of black holes come in here. So we're also gonna mask it as well to do this. But if I zoom out just a little bit further and look at this image from a big picture perspective, you can see that all of a sudden, just by reducing your stars here a good bit, you get that dust to really stand out. And we can go even just a little bit further here to do that. And really get them to really get the dust only to stand out. So you're basically trying to isolate the dust here. Um, I don't want to be so aggressive with how much I reduce this. I want to reduce it, you know, a good bit, but I don't want to remove the stars altogether. So coming up here to something like around three or four pixels is is a good place to come. And so we put these two actions that we just did in a group here. You can see things get a little bit darker, <clears throat> but the dust stands out a little bit more. Um, now, what we want to make sure we're doing, though, is only affecting the stars. So to do that, we're going to take that same image that we have right here, and we're going to create a mask so that all we're giving is, uh, you know, access to the stars itself. So we're going to create a luminance mask. You can do that by selecting all, edit, copy that. And then putting that luminance mask, right here on top of this by clicking this button and then coming here and pasting it on top only allow those actions we just did to affect the stars themselves. So if we zoom in, you can see that we don't get this weird modeling effect that we were having an issue with, um, but the star's brightness goes way down. So now the dust is standing out a lot more. Um, you can see as I click back and forth on that, just those couple minutes really kind of turned this into a star dom dominated field into a field that is much more dominated by the dust. And now maybe you, you think we went too far because you, you know those stars don't look quite sharp enough. So we can take this opacity slider and go back and forth. Um, so that's a pretty quick exercise and you can do that with almost any dusty image. Um, you know, it helps with galaxies as well too. You can do that with almost any dusty image and you can do that in a hurry to really enhance the stars. Um, and you can see they still have pretty nice bright cores. They still have a pretty good profile in them. Um, and you can use that slider to go back and forth. So, so I think that's one of the bigger things um, as we go through tonight is thinking about what you're trying to achieve and, and what's going to make that happen. So in a, in a really dusty field, but in a, in a star dense region is bring down those stars and all of a sudden this dust pops quite a bit here. So click that on and off a couple times. Um, we can come back and deal with this core later in another image, but I want to move on to another idea here, um, which is selective stretching. And we're going to use the Helix Nebula to do this. And I'm going to, I'm going to explain why um, here, because the Helix Nebula, something that's really interesting, if you zoom way in on the Helix, there are all kinds of really great details and kind of little billows of uh, dust in here and all kinds of stuff that you can enhance. The problem is that it's pretty bright across the entire range of this nebula. You can see that if I zoom way in and look real carefully, there's a lot of potential details, but there's not a lot of brightness separation between them. So in something like this, we're looking at a different problem than we were looking at with the iris. The star field is very manageable here, um, so the, the helix pops off the page very well, but within the structure itself, the dust in it does not pop very well. Um, now, there are gonna be other images that we work on tonight where there's better definition between the bright and dark spots, and I would deal with enhancing those a little bit differently than I would with something like the Helix Nebula, especially in the core. You know, in the faint outer regions, a lot of this stuff is somewhat monotone. We can do something about that too, but 
but really, you know, this is kind of more a probably planetary nebula specific exercise because they are so bright. Um, helix is a fun one to work on just because it's not only bright, but it's really big. So you can see a lot of these details that are to be had in here. So, you, you know, if I zoom way in here, you can see even kind of these little crevices and this little stuff in here has a lot of, uh, you know, potential to make difference. So sometimes when we talk about stretching or, or doing work on an image, we talk about doing it globally on an image. And that means, you know, uh, affecting the entire image at one time. But there's also opportunities or options depending on, you know, what you think about being heavy handed or light handed with image processing where you can mask out parts of the image that you're working on or you can paint in masks and just affect certain spots. And something like the Helix Nebula, that's kind of a fun exercise to go through because um, you have a lot of rain or you have a lot of, I guess, uh, parts of the image that don't have a lot of range in them that can pop a lot more as soon as you get more range into them. So what we're going to do, we're going to make a new layer here, and I'm going to kind of step through what I'm talking about. Um, <clears throat> so the first place I want to work on is we'll come, we'll zoom out, and we'll look at this. And I'm going to say that this whole region, I'm going to circle right here, has a lot of opportunity kind of to show some different details. Um, and it doesn't look very detailed right now. So if I come here, you can see these little spots that have an opportunity to kind of stand out. You can see that there's actually some streaks here that have opportunities to pop out. And then also like some little billows down here that do. So what we're gonna do is work on this and see if we can get a little kind of you know, separation between these details. So I'm gonna zoom in here and we have a new layer created. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do selective stretching. Um, so selective stretching, um, and you can think of, you can call it whatever you want. That's just kind of how I look at it. It's basically trying to get more separation between stuff that has a similar brightness level to it. So looking in this region here, this all you know, looks very similar in brightness. And you can go through an exercise of actually using a uh, color sampler tool to look at the pixel values here. You can see that those are 173. These ones are 155. Out here, kind of similar brightness is 184. And then maybe even like this little brighter spot here that should stand out a little bit more. 167, you know, your, your eyes can play tricks on you because of the surrounding stuff. Um, you can move these around some too, but this is a really good tool um, to use if you are trying to get stuff to pop a little bit more. So um, using that color sampler tool, and again, I'll show you over here, over here on the left hand toolbar, if you right click on it, go to color sampler tool and just click on any part of the image and it'll give you um, what the brightness is. Be careful if you do that. Um, you can do different size pixel average, so different boxes or samples that it wants to take. Uh, you know, sometimes you might want to take something large uh, to get a good idea of stuff. Sometimes you might want to just take a couple couple pixel area. But uh, usually, you probably want to make sure that you're not down into like a, you know a point sample because a point sample a lot of times is not going to be a good reflection of the region that you're actually in. So I usually use a three by three or a five by five. So We'll come in here, three by three. This just gives us a good idea of how we're gonna move stuff around. Um, now we're gonna get into this actual selective curve stretching. So the way, way that I like to do this is basically, I start with my brightest, par brightest parts and the next brightest parts down. Um, and the reason that I do this is because I don't wanna blow out the bright parts too much. Um, and I try to get separation between them. So looking at these little clouds right here, I want to get some separation here between this point and the little bit darker background right here. So I'm going to click on those two points. Uh, let me go ahead and delete that. And again, sometimes your eyes will play tricks on you. You might think that you might think that something is brighter than an area next to it. And you might think that it's dark, darker than an area next to it. So we're going to just drag these around a little bit here. Um, Let's pick this little spot here, and then the spot next to it here is a little bit darker. And what you want to do then is start anchoring stuff a little bit because you don't want to affect the overall image. You're just trying to affect the separation between these things here. So I'm going to put some anchors in so that I'm not affecting the stuff that's not right in this immediate vicinity. And then we're also going to do some, uh, some masks in just a minute, but we know that this point right here 
is this little bit darker one, then we know this point right here is this little bit lighter one. So what we're trying to do is just get a little separation. So you can see, you can control that right here. So if I pull it down a little bit here, then it gets even flatter. You can see that this, this whole thing kind of blends more into itself. If I pull it down a little bit more, you can basically make the whole area look flat. And this is, it's good to do this and play around and see what's happening. I understand this is why we are doing this because what we're trying to do is get some separation between the, you know, between the brightness of stuff. And so I know that I want to make these brighter parts just a tiny bit brighter while keeping this part right here the same brightness level. And when you do this kind of thing, you want to do it with really baby incremental steps because it's easy. If I pull this way up here like this to blow things out. Now it might look good and you might get a good separation there, but then all of a sudden this whole area right here is blown out and I don't have any details left in here. If I bring this back down a little bit, you can see that there's some places to get separation still in here and you don't want to pull this all the way up like this and lose all of that detail. So you want to do these little kind of subtle steps. Now you can do this in Photoshop or in Fixed Insight. So um, either one you can kind of come in and, and, and you know, pick little points on here and do this. So we're just gonna go through kind of some of these different regions here and do that stuff. And we're gonna try to get, uh, you know, get as much separation, as much kind of contrast as we possibly can here. So let's come up here. I was just talking about this region. This region up here looks like, you know, there's some opportunity to get a little bit of difference in the, in the brightness and the darkness. So we're gonna do another curve. I'm hitting Command M on a Mac. I think on uh, Windows it's Control M. And that brings up this curve, um, curves palette here uh, with the hotkey. So again, I'm gonna select this point, which is pretty bright. And I'm gonna select this point right here, which really doesn't look that different. And I don't know what it looks like, you know, kind of on the live broadcast, but in the recording, you can see it's just a little bit darker, but, um, but it's not way darker. And then, so in this case, since this point is so close to the top up here of the histogram, um, in the brightest part, I don't necessarily want to pull that up because then I'm gonna be blowing everything out. So what I'm gonna do instead is pull this part down just a little bit, just a little bit, like I said, kind of subtle steps. And then, so now you can see, if I pull out and preview this region, you can see this whole area, which was pretty flat now, before doing that, gets just a little bit more separation. Um, so that's good, I'm pretty happy with what that did there. And, and we're gonna work our way kind of down through parts that aren't quite as bright. Um, so here are two parts that I wanna get a little more separation that aren't quite as bright as the other two parts we were working on. So if I pull this curves block over here, I can see here's a little puff cloud and here's a darker spot behind it because this one's down just a little bit lower, just getting that little bit of separation there. You can see sometimes you, you don't have to anchor it, sometimes you should and it kind of depends you know the more you're willing to do the more anchoring helps out um, the more kind of times you're willing to do this but you can see that makes just a little bit of separation difference there so we can go through and do this another handful of times here um, and get as much separation as we can sometimes it's good to come out here and make sure we're getting more separation between these little clouds that are standing out so that's good but I want to make sure I keep an eye up here make sure that that's not getting blown out. So I'm gonna anchor this top part just a little bit more. Always kind of check what you're doing. And if I do this, preview on and off, you can see that makes these little points kind of jump out a little bit. Now, we don't necessarily want what we're doing to affect the whole image. Um, we want it to affect kind of this region that we're working on. So we can create a mask here, um, a number of different ways to just impact the region that we were really working on. So. Um, I might say, okay, I got this region that I was happy with looking good. So one way to apply a mask here would be just a layer, um, layer mask, hide all like this. And then, so you're gonna have, if you do alt or option and look at this, you have a completely black screen. What we wanna do is be looking at the screen that has the image on it, but, but affecting your mask. So you would click on the mask over here and then you would come in and paint on it. So you use your brush tool come down here make sure that you're painting white. You want to paint white on top of the block, so white reveals and black conceals. And you want to make sure that your paintbrush is, you know, about the right size and, and you want it to be a little bit fuzzy. So generally I would do like an opacity around 50% and a flow around 50%. And what that's going to do is just kind of make these 
adjustments you make a little bit more subtle. Now you can affect the chain, the uh, size of this brush because this brush is going to be too big for us by either coming up here to this and adjusting things up here in the size and the hardness of it, or you can come and you can use your left and right brackets, the square brackets, and that's what I usually do when I'm working around here. And then you just click and kind of drag around here and paint. And you can see, if I do that little painting right there, this kind of gives that little nice soft feel or soft brush thing where it's gonna let you reveal this kind of stuff that we just did here. Be careful, what I just did there was accidentally painted on the image, which is not what I want. I wanna paint on this mask here. So you can see as I kind of reveal that stuff a little bit, we're bringing some contrast out in this area. Um, so we're gonna go through and do the same thing again up in another region, just to kind of give you, um, give you a full impact of, of what, what can happen here. And then we'll look at the whole image overall uh, and kind of see how all of this has affected stuff. This is a nice area to work on here because you can see that there's some, if I zoom way in, there's a nice little cloud here that kind of separates, but it doesn't separate real hard um, from the darker stuff. So we're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna come in, we're gonna do some curves. <clears throat> we're gonna probably only do a couple spots here because what I really want to get some good separation here between these two spots. And you can see that one's pretty dramatic. It's probably a little more dramatic than I want right off the bat, but just clicking that preview on and off. We're not sharpening this. Um, and, and you know, we're not doing any kind of filter masking or something like that. All we're doing is just separating the brightness level a little bit. So that's good. I, I like what that did up here. But if I zoom out, you can see what's going to happen here because of this bottom curve stretch down here. It's darkening the, the, the south side um, cloud here that we really don't want to impact. So again, this kind of gives us the ability to do this in selective regions. And you want to be careful too, because you see, since we pulled this up, if I zoom out, that preview on and off. This area that we just worked on that had nice details, all of a sudden that goes completely blown out and you don't have any of that kind of range. You can see there's a little darker, a little brighter spot here. Then you do that stretch and then all of a sudden you lose that range. So we are working very specifically on this kind of area up in here. Um, that's the brighter region. So I'm going to say okay on that one and then we're going to do this one more time. And we're going to do this between this part and this part. Again, working kind of from the brightest brightest part down um, and again we can do this one more time here and you can see the impact that that's having so that's nice so now we're getting some really good separation here again look at what you're doing as you do it click that preview on and off and set now you get really good separation between the top part this band here this part here and say okay so pretty happy with that so again we're going to do the same thing and create a mask here <clears throat> And we'll probably do the math the same way. We can do it, you know, a number of different ways. But for this one, this is pretty pretty good way to do this. So we'll do a layer mask, hide all. And then if you want, you can paint this in just in this region here. And you kind of see how we're getting some nice contrast in this area. And you can do that a couple of different times. And now let's come in and let's do an area where most of the stuff is dark, but we want to get some differences in the dark parts of the image. We can look maybe down in this region to do that. So we'll do one more layer here. And again, we're going to go through that same exercise, kind of brightest spots first. This one's pretty bright, and this one's a little bit darker here. And you can see we're working our way down the histogram as we come out to these darker ones. And when we get down to the darker ones, I tend to prefer to actually drag the darker side down instead of the other side up, um, which basically kind of leaves this part anchored right here. Um, and I might even lay some anchors in here. To make sure that those outputs are the same as the input. If you're creating an anchor, so you can see output and input are both 96. We need to do that here with this one too. Because um, you'll get some weird curves in a hurry if you don't make sure that those are the same, especially when you have a lot of spots that are right next to each other. So bringing that little spot down here, that gets you kind of a nice little contrast between these. All of a sudden you get a little bit more of a 3D effect on this. Yep, you can see it right there. So, so we'll say, okay, again, you gotta be careful because globally, I kind of took this image that we were getting some nice contrast on and it killed a lot of this 
you know, kind of dust back here and stuff. So again, we're probably going to do a little bit of a selective mask here. We'll do this one, one more curve here. And this is all for the outside dust. Um, and we're going to go probably to the faintest dust we have, which is right here. And then stuff that's just a little bit darker right there. Or a little bit brighter, I'm sorry, and do the same thing again. So again, kind of subtle moves. We're not doing very sharp curves here. And we're gonna do this mask one more time. <clears throat> here, we're gonna paint the same thing one more time. Or I'm sorry, paint this area that we were just working on one more time. And that's giving us a nice kind of pop here. So now, <clears throat> let's do one last area which will be down here. And this way we'll have affected, uh, maybe we'll do right here. Um, if we do do this one more time, then I think we'll touch enough of the nebula to kind of show show what we're talking about here. And you can see how the whole, whole image overall looks different. One more time. We'll do this little region and do some curves here. To get some nice separation. Okay, so what we did overall now, I can go through and show you kind of the whole impact of all the stuff we just did. We just tried to get some difference in the in the brightness range of stuff and get our image to pop just a little bit more. And this was without sharpening anything. We didn't want to we didn't want to make hard lines here because there's not really any hard lines in this nebula to speak of. There's still a lot of soft lines. There's a couple harder spots in here. Um, that we could sharpen later, but mostly these are all kind of nice, really, you know, billowy clouds here. And to get good separation with them, you just need them to have a little bit more of a difference in brightness. So popping that on and off, just that the whole heel kind of pops just a little bit better by doing that. It helps give you that more of a 3D effect. So that's, you know, another, another image and another issue. So now we've covered one where we have a, you know, big kind of faint dusty star pool that, or, or, or big faint dusty uh, image where we're dominated by a star field. In this image, we don't have many stars, but we have a nebula that's very bright, like a planetary nebula, and it doesn't have much separation in the brightness in the core of it, and we want to do stuff to separate those. So that's a that's a good one to do that kind of thing. Um, the next one that I'm going to go to, I'll stop here first uh, and see if we have any questions. I don't think we do, but Adam, do you, were there any questions? To this point there are no questions okay um next one we'll go to uh actually let's go to we'll, we'll end on m42 and next one we'll go to is this ngc 2170 um so this one's got all kinds of stuff going on in here um you know a lot of really bright stuff a lot of really dark stuff but sometimes you get these this really dark nebula that you really want to pop um and the problem with dark nebula, um, like in this image, is that it's really dark. And so the the um, profile on it, the noise, is you know really bad. And what you get is that kind of really spackled look then. And it and you don't get kind of you know a nice clean dividing line. And dark nebula, dark dust, I should say, a lot of times, especially when it's in front of bright dust, should have a little bit of a of a harder line. But because it's so faint, you can't really just sharpen it otherwise all you're going to do is add to the noise you're going to get get a lot more noise and you're not going to get good separation so what i like to do sometimes with darker dust is actually do do as much as i can to reduce the noise in the dark dust itself um, and then actually make it a little bit darker it gives you a good opportunity uh, to get to get kind of some nice contrast with it so we're gonna look at this in a way um, where we need to First, reduce the noise a little bit, and then second, um, actually 
make it a little bit darker. If we try to just make it darker first, you're going to enhance the noise. So um, let me make a, a new layer here and show you what I'm talking about. If I just try to make this little spot here darker, and we're going to turn that into an RGB image. If I try to make this little spot just a little bit darker, because there's such noise here, um, Let me come over and use this just like this. There's such noise in this region that just making you know the dark stuff darker, you're not actually going to make this whole area darker. So if I kind of try to zoom in here and select a really dark part and then a really bright part and drag down that dark part like this, you can see what happens is you just get this kind of really uh, you know fuzzy noise on top of stuff, and that's no good. That's not that's not really going to help us out a lot because um, it doesn't really make it pop. I mean, if you zoom way out. It might make it pop pretty well, like that, you can see. And that's sort of what we want it to look like, but we want it to hold up to zooming in on it. Um, so as we zoom in further, you see it doesn't hold up very well to that. So, you know, there's a number of ways you can reduce the noise. Um, you know, the one that I think works pretty well for this dark stuff uh, is actually just blurring it a little bit. Um, we know that there's not like a lot of fine details in it. We're not, we're not damaging stuff, especially like, you know, this bright stuff over here if we come in and just blur this stuff here. So this time what I might do is a blur and do that kind of selective mask that we did last time. So I would come in here and do a filter, do a blur, Gaussian blur, and you kind of have to play around with how much you let this stuff blur. So obviously 16.2 is going to be too much because it just, you know, just destroys the entire image. That's no good. Start coming down, what you want to make sure is that you don't lose kind of the geometry of where those edges are on this dark stuff. So if I come up here at 14.6, we're still looking pretty good here. Um, we still have, or I'm sorry, 4.6, 4 4.2, somewhere around in this four pixel, maybe three pixel range of blurring this. Um, what we're doing is we're looking to get to the point where this dark nebula kind of loses that, that fine noise. So that way, as we reveal the dark stuff, it looks like it's gonna stand out a little bit more. So we'll come up, we'll do this probably around four pixels. We can back off it with the opacity slider afterwards, but we want to just kind of reveal the start stuff. So we'll do the same kind of mask again, um, or we can we can do two different masks. We'll try two different masks here and then we'll come, we'll come back and show you the difference in them. So I'm gonna make a copy of this layer here so that we can come back and look at that in just a minute. One way to do this is to just take this whole image as it is now, paste it on top of the image as a mask. And this time we wanna invert it. And the reason we wanna invert it is that we only wanna let the dark stuff through. Um, and you can see when we invert that, here's our dark dust planes right now. So we want to actually play with this mask um, to get mostly only these dark dust lines that come through. You can see it's much whiter there, and a little bit darker here. Obviously, the stars are going to be super dark. So we're going to play with actually stretching or putting a curve on this mask here. So this time, we want this really bright spot to stay exactly where it is, and we want to darken this area here. Um, because your whole thing is inverted, you actually have to kind of pull it the opposite way. If you pull it up like you might think, then you're brightening it. So in this case, we want to bring it down like this. So if I zoom out a little bit more, you can see, again, that's really revealing these dust lines very well right here. Um, but it's leaving a lot of the kind of brighter stuff completely alone. So we might do a couple of curves to make this happen. So again, we're going to stay on this bright stuff, keep that anchored. We're going to pull this way down. And now we're starting to get that impact that we want to want to see. And you can see these dark dust lines are really sticking out. Now your background is also going to be impacted somewhat by this, but let's just take a look at what this is doing to the image here. Coming back to this image overall, you can see that there's going to be more noise now in the bright spots, which is fine because we haven't done any noise reduction on the image at all, but the dark stuff now pops much, much better. So turning that layer on and off, this is what we were looking for. Um, instead of having that noise, we wanted something that looks kind of like this, where the dark dust pops a lot better and actually looks somewhat clean and smooth on top of it. Um, when it's like this, you're just never going to get really a pleasing contrast between them. So clicking that there, 
um, does a really good job. Now let's create one more layer because now that we've done this, we can actually darken that up a little bit more and the noise is not gonna be a huge deal. So we're pasting one more layer on top of it and now we're gonna do a curve to the actual image. We're gonna select this dark stuff and then the sky background behind it and we're gonna pull this dark stuff down just a little bit more, just like that. Now we're gonna zoom out and now you can see kind of these two steps done together makes a really nice kind of contrasty look and kind of has, you know, the impact that sharpening has a little bit, um, you know, but, but in what I think is a little bit of a cleaner ma manner. So now maybe we've gone too far and this is over the top. We can just take those two actions that we did in the slider and we can do whatever we want with them. But this is, you know, we were talking about trying to look at your overall image and decide what you were trying to do with your overall image. In this case, we were trying to make dark dust pop on top of a brighter background. Um, and this is probably one of my favorite methods right here is to do this thing here. So we'll just look at this one more time back and forth. Um, again, you know, kind of when you're making masks, I prefer if I can to not paint a mask in. Um, and so I like doing this method more that we, we did with this mask here, which was a, you know, a, a set of curves on a, on a luminous layer of it. Um, but we said that we go through the other one. So you can do it the other way too, where um, we blurred this stuff and we only want to reveal that dark dust. So we can do the same thing we did last time, um, you know, on the Helix Nebula where we would do a layer mask and hide all of it and then come in and paint these. Now, especially on something like this, I don't like painting. I, I like doing that more when we're doing sort of, you know, larger selective work. But when you get into painting, you know, center details like this, you're just not going to be able to actually stay true to what the geometry of the sky is very well. And that's where you start getting into, you know, a really kind of changing your image a good bit. And I, I don't like going there if I can help it. So, you know, you would have to be very, very delicate kind of with your brush here and you have to cover a lot of stuff. So using those luminance masks makes, you know, makes life a lot easier, um, especially learning how to actually control them. So you can see just in this first, like, you know, 10 or 15 seconds, I'm doing it, how tedious this can become. Um, if you only have, you know, one or two little splotches in the sky, maybe it makes sense to paint it instead because you don't want to affect the whole image globally. You could just paint in, like, if this was the only splotch in the whole sky, you could just paint in that blur there. So we're not actually painting the image. We're just painting part of the mask that we're revealing. And you can see this kind of is going to have maybe a little bit of a similar effect to what we were doing before. Um, but the other problem with the painting is you're going to have a harder transition. So, you know, if I click this on and off, you can kind of see that transition gets a lot harder. So we don't really like doing that. So again, this uh, this method is kind of used more for dark dust, getting that dark dust to stand out better in front of the image um, and have less of the noise issue. Um, so again, the steps are to reduce the noise either by blurring or whatever method you might want to use, and then creating more contrast in there. And you could take that curve that we did one more step even and get even a little more contrast if you want. I mean, you don't want to get carried away with it, but you can really darken that stuff and get it to pop very well. So you see there how well that pops if I bring that curve down one more time like that. Um, and you can see again, it still really has very little noise. We didn't change the geometry of any of it. Um, and it and just stands out really well there. So that was the next method. Um, and then I'm going to go to probably what is my favorite overall method to use, which is high pass filtering. Um, high pass filtering usually is kind of more done on a global um, level of the image. Now you can mask out certain re regions if you want to do that, um, but there's there's nice tools using high pass filtering to impact you know scales of an image um, in a in a much more uh, specific way. So. Excuse me. Um, we're going to do that on M42 here. And I've done that a couple times here and probably gone into more detail than I'll go tonight for that. But um, we'll go ahead and do it one more time here so you can kind of see how it works. Now, I'm not sure, and maybe somebody else who's more fluent and picks insight in the room um, could give good examples of how to do sim something similar to high pass filtering um, and picks insight but I am not as familiar with it and picked in sight. All these other ones, I think there's there's good methods to do something similar. So what I did was I created 
six new layers and just copied where we were and I created six new layers. Um, and what I want to do now is put each of these sets of two into their own folder. So I would take these two right here and you click one, then you click the other one with shift held down, put that into a folder. We're going to do the same thing with these two, put them into a folder. Same thing with these two and put them into a folder. So we'll turn off these top two and we'll start with this bottom one here. And what we're going to do is the large scale high pass filtering here. So we want to do a filter, go to other, high pass. I'll drag this over here so we can see it. I'm going to zoom way out on the image so you can see it. Now our goal here is to look at the large scale structures and get kind of a nice, nice bit of pop on the large scale structures. So as I do this, pull this pixel slider up, the radius of it, you can see in this block and here how that impacts the image. If you're looking to kind of work in a very specific region, we can zoom in and look, look at how that impacts this very specific region. Um, you know, if I pull this way down, you can see that's just going to affect some of this stuff. But we're, we're working on the high scale stuff first. So we want to look at the whole image. So look out here on the whole image. We're trying to get some nice kind of pop and contrast in the whole image. Typically, I would pick something maybe anywhere from 75 to 150. I mean, it really depends on your image scale and the size of the target that you're working on. But for this one, I might pick, you know, might pick 150 because this was a mosaic. Um, so we'll go up to around 150. And then we're going to do the same thing, the layer above it. And now, obviously, this doesn't look like what we want it to look like. <laughs> so, um, you know, there's a couple different um, layer types that you can apply to these. The way that I usually do it is a soft light for the top one, overlay for the bottom one. I think maybe Eric Coles and I talked at some point about doing um, different levels of those, but you can see kind of the pop that that gives to this nebula. It really kind of makes it stand out. Now, we're going to go back and put in a couple mats over all of this um, so, they, so that we don't have quite such a drastic look to it. But you can see that really does pretty instantly a good job of kind of getting a, a nice big effect, especially when you're zoomed out um, on that scale. It gets stuff to really pop really well. Um, the next one we want to do is a medium scale. So we're going to turn this on. We're going to come in here and do the same two high pass filters. But we're going to do them at a scale of probably 30. And this is going to be to affect stuff kind of more like in probably this region, these size details. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. Kind of some of these, you know, thin but larger dust lanes. So somewhere around 30 should work. You don't have to be real specific on, on the, that radius. And then same thing again. Obviously, we don't want to leave these as is. So we'll do a soft light and an overlay. Now, one thing you have to know is that each of these folders need to go down in opacity. If you don't, obviously, the only thing that's going to stand out is the front folder. So we're going to take these opacities down because we're also doing this much more dramatically than we really want to. So we'll go to 50 on both of them. And then let's come up to our top layer and let's do the kind of real high resolution work. Again, just to kind of show you how far we've come with those two sets, clicking this top one on and off that we haven't touched shows kind of the 3D effects that these high pass filters have. Um, so we're going to work on this top one now. We're going to go to the small scale stuff. And to go to the small scale stuff, we'll go to a high pass. And now I think what we want to do is we want to come into some of these details, almost kind of right here in this core. You can see. I you know, put my block right in here. You can see these details. We want to come all the way down to two or three pixels. Yeah, something like that looks good. So you can see there's plenty of detail to gain in there. We're going to lay, apply that high pass filter to both of them. OK. And change your layer methods again, soft light and overlay. Again, we're going to bring that opacity down. Now what I like to do, once we've done this, is 
put all three of these into a folder. And so you can see this really does a good job across the board. It kind of from zoomed out, large scale stuff looks like it pops really well. You zoom way in here, you can see that this stuff is going to pop better too. It's a lot of kind of more contrast in a hurry. Now this this kind of filtering works really good for for an object in the sky that's got a better signal to noise ratio. Um, something like M42, where even your dark stuff is still pretty bright, um, and and you can use this kind of more globally because there's just no part of the image where you're going to destroy it. This stuff on um, really really dark nebula or really kind of faint dust or 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 uh, sparse stuff doesn't work as well. But on something like M42 that's really bright, it works really well. Um, but the only problem is now let's look over here with the core of these stars. These stars all got really blown out. Um, and the bright stuff got very bright too, um, much more so than we want it to. So we're going to put two masks on this. One we're going to put on is going to be a star mask. Um, so I'm going to come over here. I'm going to select the color range. And I'm going to select these bright stars. That's really kind of what I want to conceal with this. So I'm going to select them, I'm going to invert this, sort of like that. We can look at the image here too, and it'll kind of show you what's selected. Maybe we went too far on the bright stuff a little bit, but um, we can kind of play with a little bit once we create that map. So I'm going to say, okay. And you can see we selected these really bright stars here. Um, I want to make them just a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go to select, modify, Band. You can expand this somewhat generously um, because it's a high pass filter. It's not a stretch. We're not going to create these crazy halos if we get, you know, a lot larger with that. Oops. Let me undo that. And let me step backwards. I think what we did was we inverted that before I wanted to. So let's do this one more time. Let's do select the color range. We want to invert the mask once it's made, but not yet. Let's click on that. Let's click on these stars here, kind of like we did last time. There we go. Select, modify, expand them. So it's like seven pixels. There we go. Okay, so again, it's okay for them to be quite a bit larger. We're also going to put just a little bit of a feather on them. Um, by the same thing, modify, feather, we'll probably use a, bring this over here, a three pixel feather. Something like that. We're going to make this a mask right here. And I did that just by having the selection. Um, and once I had the selection, I just clicked on this mask. And what that did was it automatically made a mask like this. That's not what we want. Obviously, we want to invert this because we want to conceal the stars and reveal everything else. So let's we'll Look at what this did now. It's much better. So now the stars are not all super blown out. You can see the stars actually don't change at all. But if we come over here and still look at kind of what some of this stuff did, we still got that nice popping contrast here. Um, but the stars aren't changing at all. And that's a big deal because if those stars, if you reveal the stars on this, then they're going to overtake the image. So I can show you just by disabling this mask for a second. You can see how all that the stars really kind of take over it. Now, you might be saying, well, that's good you hid the stars, but then some of this stuff kind of got blown out so, or, or taken away when we created that mask. And that's fine. So, you know, if there's stuff in there that you want to, you know, kind of leave in there, we can just look at this mask and look at what we did with it. You can see up here, some of this stuff got, got blocked out um, that wasn't stars. So we can either paint that or what we can do is we can just kind of drag this down a little bit here or up a little bit so we can we can affect the actual mask here um, some kind of like we did last time and, it, and it's good to kind of take a look at your mask and what your mask is doing the other thing that i see is there's a little bit harder lines than i want in this mask so maybe i'll stretch this up just a little bit and let's look at what that did that helped out some i think that brought back in some of that high pass filter we want and then sometimes you want might want to blur this mask just a little bit too so that you're not getting hard hard effects from the mask. So there we go. So that is the high pass filtering um, you know, series of stuff. Uh, the one other thing that you might want to do when you're doing a high pass filter 
Um, you know, I don't think it's necessary on this image, but you can see just a little more noise got added to the image. Um, sometimes you might want to put something, you know, in here where where you actually protect the super dark stuff, like just the very background sky as well. But it doesn't appear to be necessary in this image just because the signal noise ratio is so good. Um, but if you were to do that, what you would do is kind of what we just did with this mask here, but you would do another one where you make new folder, drag this up into the folder here, do a selection, and you can do a color range again. This time you're picking just the black stuff, just the very black stuff. Turn that fuzziness down a lot where we want only the darkest stuff kind of to be revealed like that. Go ahead and make that into a mask. And now if we come over and look at this mask here, it's going to be a little bit harder edge than we want to. Um, and it also, as you see, needs to be inverted because we want to reveal all this stuff in here. But here's your really dark background sky. And that, you know, what we're going to do is kind of put a Gaussian blur on this whole thing and a big one so that we don't have hard edges in our mask. This is just kind of a good way to protect the really dark sky background and make sure that we're not adding a lot of noise up in this dark sky background here. And that looks nice and clean now. So overall, you can see this kind of set here gives you a lot of range. It impacts both the really high resolution stuff down in here, gets you some nice pop on that stuff. And then also if you zoom way out, it gives you some nice pop on the overall image as well. So I think that was the last one that I wanted to go over for tonight. Um, I'll pause and see if Adam has any questions lined up for me. And it looks like we're right at 1030. So it's probably a good stopping time too. Uh, no, no questions. Just one comment. Uh, never thought of doing so many variants of high pass filtering, but the results look amazing. Um, yeah, especially on ones like M42, you know, some of the brighter ones, the rosette, heart and soul, they look very good for those kind of ones. Yeah. Yeah, great examples of uh, how you work with the combination of dark uh, dark regions as well as light regions. Thank um, you. It's, uh, it's funny. It is a lot more, uh, I don't want to say artistic, but uh, a bit more seat of the pants and not in a negative way uh, than uh, Pix Insight. Um, you know, you, you, we always think Pix Insight gives you more control, but for a lot of these things, I think uh, that immediate visual feedback and the layering really allow you to pull out the detail. Um, yeah, we've, we've talked about kind of comparing the two before. I think it's, a lot of times it's just a little bit of a different approach. And I do think our, more artistic is probably the right description. I, I feel like I veer more towards being an artistic processor a lot of the time. Um, and it, and Sometimes it is more freedom and what the final image is, and, it, and you know it's definitely playing up. Um, I guess the the parts of the image that are interesting a little bit more, um, and there's a fine line or a super wide broad line between <laughs> what's acceptable and not, and what's art and not. But um, you know, at the end of the day, I think we're making mostly making these look pretty. So um, so it's fun. You can go both ways. Awesome. Thank you, Josh. Um, I don't see any other new questions popping up. Uh, you've got about one minute to ask your questions. See, I see a few people popping in and out of in and out of conversation. Hope they're not having issues. But um, uh, if we don't hear anything else, well, first of all, let me say this: uh, everybody who has ordered a T-shirt, uh, the T-shirts are either in the mail or should be in your hands. Uh, there was one person waiting on a medium. You'll know who you are because you're waiting on a medium. Uh, everyone else should have their t-shirts. If you don't, give me an email um, and I'll, I'll take care of it. Um, and that said, I think that's probably it for the night. Uh, I do want to thank Josh for presenting. Uh, one uh, request, we are growing increasingly desperate for uh, presenters and Josh uh, jumped in and uh, bailed us out this, uh, this weekend, but uh, we're always looking for new presenters. So if you've got an idea and you think you can present it or you can push someone into presenting for us, then let us know. Um, 
Otherwise, uh, well, just tune in next week. Uh, Josh, one off-topic question for you. Are you still imaging? <laughs> I am starting to image again. I stopped for a while, not because of the weather, but the weather wouldn't have let me image for the last three or four months anyway. So it's, uh, hopefully, hopefully we'll be uh, getting some good weather again here shortly. Yep. Yeah, we were talking about this uh, before the before the show. Um, I I uh, kind of like imaging in the in the winter a little bit more than the summer. The days are too long in the summer. It doesn't get dark quick enough. In the winter, there's nothing really else going on, and I feel like uh, even with the channel, I see a, a fall off in viewers in the summer. Uh, and then once the weather turns and uh, gets cold, and nobody wants to go outside anymore, at least us northerners. Uh, that's when it seems like, uh, I don't know, I hit the ground running. But uh, again, thank you, Josh. Thank you all for watching. And uh, we will see you next week. Uh, when we determine what the session is, you'll see it posted. Thanks again. Have a good night.